Good morning, church, and good morning to those watching online today and who will watch it later. We welcome you to the Groveport United Methodist Church. I kind of feel like I'm reminded when I was in school when the announcements would come on and say, here are the morning announcements. Usually it was the principal, sometimes it was a special student like myself. Here are your morning announcements. Uh, our church is hosting a Dave Ramsey Financial Peace to University. Dave Hurdle and Brad Lewis will be uh, facilitating this class. See them if you have any questions. You can sign up through the email link uh, on the, on, uh, that's listed in the bulletin. And the first class will start September 22nd. And child care will be provided for that. It's on the church website. On the church website as well. Thank you. Uh, save the date. September 19th will be the church-wide uh, fellowship meal following the service of so September 9th. Hang around, plan on for a wonderful meal on that day. We have, yeah, that's on the 19th. We have uh, we have a lot of bicycles. So uh, through your contacts is how we get these names uh, to give out bicycles. So if you know of a neighbor or a, a friend or a child, or we watch Facebook to see when someone maybe has a bike stolen and we react that way, but we do have a lot of bicycles to share. Um, I just want to also highlight UMCOR. UMCOR is really a wonderful organization, uh, the United Methodist Committee on Relief. And what's really nice about what UMCOR does is 100% of the money that we send to UMCOR goes to help uh, in, in the areas of the country where there's been disasters. And, and right now the concentration is uh, Hurricane Ida. Um, and I knew I had I knew I had another page now I'm trying to now I'm trying to find it. Uh, I think those are all the announcements I have this morning. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. <laughs>
Not only do you look great, you sound great. Choir practice is Wednesday at 6.30. <laughs> Will you join me in the call to worship that comes from Proverbs 29? The righteous care about justice for the poor. Mockers stir up, at a, stir up a city. If a wise person goes to court with a fool, the bloodthirsty hate a person of integrity. Fools give, fools give full vent to their rage. Do the congregational prayer together. Jesus Christ, you are full of wondrous love. Our lives flow with the goodness that comes from your land. In you we have redemption, redemption, power, and contentment. Be glorified today and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning. I'm Jeff Myers. I am not Pastor Jonathan, and so, um, sorry, no, 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 he'll be back next week. Um, so, welcome to worship this morning. Uh, we're going to enter into our prayer time. Uh, we do have one uh, addition to the prayer list. Uh, Jim Stid's son, Carl Clark, uh, was recovering from COVID or suffering from COVID, went to the hospital. He has blood clots in his lungs, and he's in the hospital in Dayton. So prayers for Jim and his family. Um, we'll have our prayer song here in just one second. Know that the altar rail, as always, is open for uh, you. If you've got some uh, personal business with God this morning, feel free to come forward. I know that folks will come around you more than likely. So with that. come to you this morning uh, with hearts that uh, we can't, uh, we can't, uh, we can't get out from in front of the speakers. Yes, sir. There we are. Very good. Lord, we're full of praise this morning for all that you've done in our lives. There's just uh, not enough words to... Uh, substantially give you the praise that um, uh, we've experienced in our lives of your uh, your grace and your gifts. Lord, we are grateful for every one of those gifts, even simply the opportunity to gather here in peace and, um, and celebrate you. Lord, uh, there are many prayer concerns that uh, have come to our attention. There are many prayer concerns that are not within our attention, uh, both within this congregation and across the planet. And Lord, uh, all those we would lift up, uh, specifically lift up the ones that are on our prayer concern list because they're closest to us. There are many, um, many families face uh, challenges and decisions and, and, uh, potential losses, and Lord, we just ask that uh, whatever be the uh, outcome of those things, that you be glorified. Lord, we uh, know that there are things that are to be celebrated this week. We lift those up and give you the praise and all the glory for uh, what, what you have done to make those happen in our lives. 
Lord, we just ask um, your continued blessings on uh, on us and each of us who uh, carry with us each each day challenges, concerns, things that weren't thought of the day before that come forward today that uh, sometimes uh, are totally unexpected. And Lord, we just ask that uh, you continue to hold us in the palm of your hand and bless us as you have in the past. Lord, we lift up uh, our community. We lift up uh, our country. We lift up the world, Lord. We just ask for peace, for understanding, and that you be glorified in all that occurs. Lord, when you were here, you taught us to pray a specific prayer. Lord, we close with that prayer this morning, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. You lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's an opportunity for us to think about the gifts that we've received and how we can pay back, um, pay a little back, uh, and, and bless others uh, through our offering. There are several ways to do that uh, through the uh, website Ezekiel uh, program. Uh, there's a, a plate in the back near the parlor where you can drop in your gifts, or you can simply mail them to 512 Main Street. Uh, let us pray. Father, we just thank you for the giver. We thank you for the gifts. And you th we thank you for the opportunities that you've given us to share what we have here with others, whether it's in this community or beyond. We are designed to be generous. We are designed to care for others. Be with us as we do that in the ministry from this place. In Jesus' name, amen. We stand for the doxology as the offering is secured. <laughs>
Scripture today comes from 2 Corinthians 5, verses 18 through 20. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And as he committed to us the message of reconciliation, we are therefore Christ ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Well, good morning again. Will you join me in prayer? Lord, may these words be your words. Let uh, you be glorified in whatever is said here today. And let this message rest on our hearts and bring us new understanding. All these things I ask in your precious son's name. Amen. Well, good morning and thank you for the privilege of being able to share God's word with you. As many of you already know, I feel I'm nothing more than a forgiven sinner. A sinner because I live in this world and forgiven because of what Jesus did on the cross and my choice to accept his gift of grace. Know that there's some uh, space in the um, bulletin to make notes. If you feel like there's anything worthwhile that's said that you need to write down, feel free to do that. You may go home with a blank piece of paper and that's okay. So that's fine. So I'm just kind of curious, how was your week this past week? Did everything go according to plan? Were all tasks completed on time and better than expected? Did all your interactions with other people go superbly? Were all those interactions effortless? Did anything on the news challenge your peace this week? Maybe everything in your life was not perfect this week and that's not surprising. For those who follow Christ every day is a battle. You know, the society that we live in, not unlike the churches and Christ followers of the Bible, likes to pretend there is no God. Society, that is the secular world, likes to pretend that we will not be accountable for our actions. As Christians, we have the privilege to offer an answer to the world, and that answer is in Jesus Christ. The secular world suggests that we'll find satisfaction happiness and peace in political power, money, technology, sports, and all sorts of non-marital relationships. But the satisfaction and happiness of those things is short-lived. That's because the only true pleasure, the only true satisfaction comes from God and the grace of Jesus Christ. Christ has bridged this gap of sin and death that separates us from God this reconciliation is what we hear about in the scripture today. God reconciled himself to the world through Christ. But it's the next verse that I want to devote some time to this morning. As a result of this reconciliation, quote, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. Paul, in this letter to the Corinthians, includes himself while speaking to the church at Corinth. And also he speaks to us when he says, we, we are Christ's ambassadors. Well, what does that mean? That means Paul is calling all Christ followers of every generation from his time to now to stand in the gap with Christ to be in the ministry of sharing the gospel and making Christ's grace real to people. This is another way of saying we are to be the church. Understand this is a biblical concept that all Christ followers, pastors and laypersons, are called to be Christ ambassadors. Did you notice that Paul does not separate out the folks in full-time ministry, that is our pastors, and call them Christ ambassadors? No, he includes all Christ followers in his letter to the Corinthians. Further, we should be supportive of one another. 
that is to pastor to one another as well. Have you ever considered that? That we're called to be a pastor to our pastor? People often have this concept that pastors have few or no problems and can handle them alone. That somehow they have the inside track on easy solutions to problems. Spoiler alert, they don't. And sometimes we think that as laypersons, we are in the audience for the pastor's show. Being in the audience for the pastor's show is what I would refer to as being a consumer. A consumer, but not necessarily committed. As a layperson, we are present, but not participating. Only the clergy do any pastoring. Friends, that is not the biblical model of the layperson-minister relationship. We are to lift and support one another in Christ's mission. An ambassador for Christ is not only a clergy person, it's anyone who has experienced God's love, acceptance, and forgiveness, and shares it with others. They've received the benefit of God's grace and now have a high call in their lives to share it with others. That means that laypersons are called to be ambassadors just as pastors. Now, some of you biblical scholars might challenge me and say, now, Jeff, those are Paul's words, but did Jesus say anything about being ambassadors of the gospel message? Well, indeed he did. I wouldn't set it up that way if he didn't, okay? I'm, only, I'm simply going to give you two well-known examples in the Gospel of Luke. We go to chapter 9. Now remember, Luke was a Greek. He was not from Jerusalem. He was not a Jew. He was a Gentile Christ follower, a physician by training. He was not an eyewitness to Jesus. So his Gospel came from his research into the stories of the time. That said, his gospel is considered to be fairly accurate. In chapter 9, in the first few verses, Jesus sends the 12 apostles out, giving them the power and authority to drive out demons and cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick. Now, these 12 apostles, apostles, another word for messenger, are whom we commonly call the 12 disciples. So these closest friends and followers are sent out to preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick. These folks were called by Christ to be his ambassadors. So here we have evidence that God knew he would need ambassadors, messengers to tell the gospel message, heal the sick, and demonstrate the love of Christ. We go to the next chapter in Luke 10. We look again at the first few verses, and here Jesus sends out 72 followers, ordinary folks, just like you and me, in 36 teams of two, with specific instructions to heal the sick and to declare the kingdom of God is near you. Here, a larger group of Christ followers are called by Jesus to be ambassadors. So we do have biblical evidence that all Christ followers are called to be Christ ambassadors. So time for a little self-reflection. Do you feel that as an ambassador of Christ, are you more of a consumer or do you feel truly committed? Do you just come to worship on Sunday, punch that off the to-do list and forget about Christ and your faith until the following Sunday? Or are you committed? Now, just an explanation about commitment. A commitment is different than a contribution. Now, it seems that most of folks here probably eat breakfast, and we have some folks here who work in the agricultural background, so this analogy might just work. We often will discuss a standard American breakfast as bacon and eggs, right? I know few folks really eat that on a daily basis, but hang with me for just a minute. We can use the egg and bacon breakfast to understand the difference between a contribution and a commitment. You see, in that example, the chicken makes a contribution, right? The pig makes a commitment, right? 
Now, a contribution is something that is usually easier for us than a commitment. It usually takes less effort or time. I would offer that a true commitment will take effort, time, and become a priority of our life. That means when we're truly committed, there may be other things in our life that will be dislodged in favor of this thing that we have committed to. Fortunately, not every commitment will take our life. Now, anytime we call out someone in the congregation as an example to make a point, there's a small level of danger. The first danger is that regardless of what a positive example one may have display that we celebrate, we are still highlighting a sinner. So there may be folks who would say, well, that person may have done that well, but let me just tell you, they are not perfect. And let me tell you how they're not perfect. The second danger is that someone who is not mentioned or highlighted for what they have done may feel slighted because someone else has raised up or highlighted as a positive example. I would ask that you resist the temptation of either of these two responses as I share this. About 20 or 25 years ago, Joyce Galbraith began what she likely thought was a reasonably short-term gig as one of our adult Sunday school teachers. Now, I don't know this, but I would suspect Joyce thought that this would be a way to make a contribution to the church, using her skills as a teacher in leading the class. Now, over those years, dozens of people have been drawn closer to Christ, gained a better understanding of the Christian walk through her work. She will tell you that she simply facilitates, but yet it takes some level of preparation each week. Weekly preparation, more than a thousand times for all those weeks of class. Here's the point I'd like to make about that preparation. At some point it shifted from being a contribution, something given easily, to being a true commitment, something that dislodged other things from Joyce's life in order to be ready to teach. That commitment has been used by God in such a variety of ways it would be difficult to count. And thank you to Joyce. Now you might say, well now Jeff, I don't have the skills to teach. Well, you know what, that's great news because God needs to use people in so many different ways that he can find a way to use your commitment as his ambassador to advance the kingdom. Now, maybe you'd say, well, how about some tips, Jeff? Can you give me some tips? Well, here's some thoughts about that. Your experience as an ambassador will be different than anybody else's. It's personal. It starts with us. If you don't know where to be or what you're called to be, commit yourself to some daily study, some prayer, and remember, Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness with his own temptations before he began his ministry and work. Frequently, he would separate himself to pray and prepare. Those are examples worthy of following. Draw on your own experiences how God has acted in your life, how you have experienced God's grace. Now, as you think of ways that you've experienced God's grace, you realize that your life does not include every possible life situation that may affect someone else. The loss of a spouse or child, an attempt to escape an addiction, or the desire to return a marital relationship to purity may be what a friend comes to you with. And those experiences may not be yours at all. But your own experiences of God's grace can be powerful witnesses. That's what will make your witness real and personal to other people. Know that your experience as an ambassador is spiritual. The spiritual world is not simply the life we experience after death, but also the wholeness of life in this world according to God's will. As ambassadors, we are called to help others to live life in the fullness of God's grace and truth. Sometimes we're the vessels that God uses to share with others how God may want to use them. Likewise, others can be used by God to share with us how God may want to use us, especially if we don't listen to him directly. Being an ambassador is servant-oriented. 
We act not on our own authority, but as a representative of the Master. Our example is to serve as Jesus served. Remember when Jesus washed his disciples' feet at the Last Supper? Jesus' example there is one of humble servant leadership. These feet had been exposed to the elements of a dry, dirty, dusty climate. The act of washing the feet was reserved for one of the lowest servants in the house. Christ's act is one of true love, an example that shows no act of service should be overlooked and no one is too good to show the humblest act of service and love. Being an ambassador is not something that we do alone, it's shared. One of Jesus' first actions was to call 12 others who would share his life and his mission. Now, if Christ knew, he could not accomplish the mission alone. It's clear that none of us can be his ambassador on our own. For us today, this means laypersons and clergy work together as partners in Christ's mission. Not our own agenda, but Christ's agenda, his mission. Lastly, being an ambassador for Christ calls for our best. This is not a, if I have time or as I can squeeze it in type of attitude. Jesus went to the cross for you and me, not giving his leftovers, but giving his best. He gave his best, not his leftovers for you and for me. We're called to give our best for Christ. So where are you? Are you a consumer or are you committed? Christ calls you and me, just like his disciples, to be ambassadors. Are you committed? Are you willing to be committed? Christ calls us, each of us, to be his ambassadors to one another. Each one of us has a personal and non-transferable mission to make Christ real and to share his grace so others may know God's salvation. I pray that if you feel you're a consumer today, that you can make a commitment to be a true ambassador for Christ. Amen. In Holy Communion, we have the opportunity to share the privilege of communing with God and to be part of Jesus through that act. I'm going to ask our communion stewards to come forward. On the night before he was crucified, Jesus had celebrated the Passover meal with his closest friends in an upper room. In the middle of the meal, he took the bread, he broke it, and he said to them, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. Later in the meal, he picked up the cup. It was the cup of redemption. And he said, this is my blood shed for you and for others for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you take the bread and drink the juice, think of me. As you can see, we'll be taking communion by intention today. We celebrate a holy, holy, we also celebrate a holy communion, of course. We celebrate an open communion here, meaning that you don't have to be a member of this church. You just have to be one who wants to celebrate Christ's, Christ in your life. We invite you to come forward. We'll start with the folks in the back and in the balconies to come down, come down the aisle. We'll take a piece of the bread, break it off, dip it in the juice, and then go back up the aisles back to your seat. We don't direct you, it's self-directed, so come as you feel called. With that.
please stand for our closing hymn today as this one calls us for us. stay behind the speakers. That's what you have to understand. <laughs> Let's go forth with the understanding that God loves us, that he needs us to be his ambassadors. He wants us to be his ambassadors, and we should make a commitment to be those ambassadors. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. 